Hello, and welcome to the fourth episode of the Mad Skills Architecture series. In this episode, I'll talk about the domain layer, an optional layer which sits between the data and UI layers. Now, I know what you're thinking, another layer in my app architecture? Why would I need another layer? Well, the domain layer can actually simplify your architecture, making it easier to understand, as well as more scalable and simpler to test. So let's dive straight in. The domain layer holds business logic, a set of rules and actions that make your app valuable. Business logic is different to UI logic. UI logic defines how to display things on screen, whereas business logic defines what to do with events and data changes. Examples of business logic include getting the latest news articles in a news app or showing an error message if there's no internet connection. Now, in smaller apps, this logic is often held in view models or in the data layer. But as the app grows, it may make sense to consolidate all that logic into a new layer, the domain layer. It's important to note that the domain layer is not responsible for how data is displayed. That's the job of the UI layer. And it's not responsible for storing or retrieving data. That's the job of the data layer. So in summary, the domain layer only holds business logic. The domain layer is made up of classes known as interactors or use cases. And a use case represents a single task which the user can do or which the app performs on the user's behalf. So in this episode, we'll use the following convention for naming use case classes. A verb representing what you're doing, a noun describing the object that you're doing it to, and the use case suffix. Now, using a suffix like use case on every class might seem like overkill, but it can make code much more readable, especially in large code bases. That said, this naming convention is just one way of naming your use cases. Feel free to use whatever works for you. So use cases should be simple, lightweight, and immutable. If you need to cache data, this logic might be better placed in the data layer. Use cases can be dependent on lower layers, such as repositories in the data layer, and on other use cases, but they shouldn't be dependent on higher layers, such as view models. They should expose data and operations to the UI layer the same way that repositories do, using suspend functions or flows in Kotlin, or callbacks if you're not using Kotlin. And if you're not using Kotlin, I'm deeply sorry for you. Let's take a look at some examples of use cases. In a news app, we might want to display articles together with some information about the article's author. To do this, we can create a use case, which gets the latest news articles from a news repository and combines it with data from an author's repository. Let's say we also want to just display the article publication date in the user's local format and time zone. This could be implemented in a format date use case and used by our first use case. The important thing to remember here is that use cases contain reusable logic, so they can also be used by other use cases. And it's perfectly normal to have multiple levels of use cases in the domain layer. Since use cases do just one thing, you can take advantage of Kotlin's invoke operator to make a use case instance callable as if it were a normal function. When you pass your use case as a dependency, for example, when constructing a view model, you can call your use case like a normal function. This makes calling use cases concise because it avoids the need for an extra redundant method. One of the advantages of using the use case suffix can be seen here. It makes it obvious that you're calling a domain layer class rather than a normal function. So use cases don't have their own lifecycle. Instead, they're scoped to the class that uses them. Because use cases don't contain mutable data, you can safely create a new instance of a use case class every time you pass it as a dependency. Now, let's talk about threading. Use cases should be main safe, as in it should be safe to call a use case from the main or UI thread. If a use case is performing a long running blocking operation, then move it to a background thread, but consider whether that blocking operation would be better handled in the data layer so that the results can be cached. OK, let's take a deeper look at how to perform common tasks in the domain layer. Firstly, encapsulating reusable business logic. If you have logic which is used by multiple view models, then place this logic inside a use case. For example, in our news app, we have some common logic which is used to format dates according to the user's formatting and time zone preferences. Traditionally, this kind of logic can often be found inside static methods of util classes. These methods are usually hard to find and can become a space for miscellaneous functions without a clearly defined purpose. Moving this type of logic to a use case clarifies its role in the app architecture. 
Additionally, use cases can share common functionalities such as threading and error handling from base classes, which can benefit larger teams at scale. The second common task which use cases can perform is combining data from multiple repositories. Let's expand on our news app example from before. We have two repositories, news repository and authors repository that handle news and author data operations respectively. We want to display more information about the author next to each news article, but the news repository exposes only the ID of the author. Author information can be obtained from the authors repository. Now, we could place this logic directly in a view model, but combining repositories can involve complex logic. Having this logic inside view models can make them unnecessarily large, complicated, and potentially more difficult to test. A better solution is to create a use case to combine the data. This avoids bloating our view model with logic and creates an easily testable unit, which can be reused wherever the functionality is needed. Let's take a look at the implementation. The use case takes the repositories as dependencies, as well as the dispatcher to be used for background work. Here we're using the invoke operator to make the use case callable, but you could also use a normal function, whatever works for you. The function returns a model which contains the combined data. And inside the function, we process each of the articles received from the news repository and combine them with the author information. This is done on a background thread because although the data layer is main safe, we don't know how many articles we'll be processing and therefore should not block the calling thread. One other consideration when implementing the domain layer is whether you should still allow direct access to the data layer from the UI layer or force everything through the domain layer. Now, some advantages of making this restriction are that it stops your UI from bypassing domain layer logic. For example, if you're performing analytics logging on each access request to the data layer. It can also make unit testing view models easier since they only ever depend on use cases rather than on repositories as well. However, the potentially very significant disadvantage is that it forces you to add use cases even when they're just simple function calls to the data layer, which can add complexity for little benefit. In most cases, it makes sense to add use cases only when needed, allowing the UI layer to access the data layer as required. Although, as always, it comes down to your individual code base and whether you like strict rules or a more flexible approach. So, in summary, the domain layer is used for encapsulating business logic and can be used to reduce the complexity of the UI layer. It can also be used to avoid duplication by extracting logic used by multiple view models into a single use case. And lastly, it can improve testability. Logic is much easier to test when it's contained in a small classes which only do one thing. So that's it for the domain layer. Now you know what it is and how to use it, you can decide whether it's right for your code base. This talk is just a summary of the MAD architecture guidance, so for more information, check out the full guide here. That's all for now. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. Also, to be notified of more videos like this, please do subscribe to this channel. Thanks very much. <laughs>